Nation, welcome into the week nine edition of the Perfect Pivot podcast. It is our GPP podcast where we discuss cash games and or who to play in cash games and then pivot off of them. I am your host, Justin Bales, joined by Ben Hostler. Ben, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I think this is a really fun week, which we kind of talked about on the Game 3 podcast. Like, I think there's a lot of ways to go. I think ownership will actually be kind of spread out compared to some of the other weeks we've seen this season. So I think it's a really fun week uh, in general. Yeah, I completely agree. And speaking of the Game Theory podcast, if you go to our channel on here, uh, every it's been Thursday. Sometimes we do it Wednesday. Uh, the Game Theory podcast comes out earlier in the week. We have the cash process. We have a prop podcast. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You can turn on notifications and get any time a podcast of ours drops. You can also go to dfskarma.com and find all of our free articles. That's also where you can purchase our core plays. It's $15 a week. You can buy for a month as well. And with all of that out of the way, let's just get into breaking this down. Um, we start at quarterback, and it's it's a weird because there's not like one guy that's getting a ridiculous amount of ownership. Um, the, the top cash play is going to be Josh Allen at 7,000. But then everyone above him is also projected for like – right around 10% ownership. So for the sake of the podcast, we're going to take out Josh Allen and anyone above him, which is Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, and Patrick Mahomes. Who are you pivoting if you're not using one of the the five highest priced guys? Yeah, my favorite pivot at quarterback. I can't believe I'm saying this. We got to shout out Sam on this one. So I'm going to talk about his boy, Matt Ryan. Uh, I, I can't, I can't believe <laughs> I knew it was coming. I know. I, I never play Matt Ryan. I really don't. But I think this is a good week to do so. I don't think he's going to be owned. Um, obviously, he's at home. The total in this game has jumped up to 50. Uh, the Falcons implied team total has jumped up to uh, 27 points. So they actually currently, um, another guy I like this week a lot is Justin Herbert, um, which I'll let you talk about if you want to. Uh, talk about him, but the the Falcons actually currently have a higher implied team total than the Chargers do, and the Broncos are banged up on defense again. AJ Bouye is going to miss this game. I know he's probably going to be without Calvin Ridley, but he still has Julio Jones, and I just like you know it's tough for me to really trust Todd Gurley at this point in his uh, career. So you know, like you feel pretty good about Matt Ryan getting you the three hundred yard bonus if the game is close. And I think he has upside at his price tag, and he's going to come with really low ownership. And Julio Jones, which we'll talk about a little bit at receiver, is projecting to be maybe the highest owned receiver on the slate. So this is a way to still be able to play Julio Jones, but still get some leverage uh, in your lineup. Yeah, I really like the call. Um, Before we got on here, like when me and you were just discussing prior, I assumed you were going to take Justin Herbert here, and then I was going to take Matt Ryan. All right, we uh, switch the roles then. We're just going to switch it up. I'll take Justin Herbert, 6,800. There's not that much to be said about him. Las Vegas' defense isn't good. They can't get pressure on the quarterback. And Herbert has, to just put it casually, he's been balling out. Like, he's got three-plus touchdowns in each of his last four games. He ran for one and 66 yards against the Jags. He can add the rushing stats. He can throw for a ton of yards. The big issue with him is that whenever they get even like the slightest of leads, all of a sudden Anthony Lynn just takes his foot off the pedal and decides that they're just going to run over and over and over. Um, Hopefully after last week's collapse where they did that and Denver scored in the final few seconds to win the game, Lynn decides just to keep, you know, keep the pedal down this entire game and really unleash Herbert. Truthfully, I don't trust it, but at the same time, Herbert's been playing well enough that it hasn't really mattered. There isn't really a cash option that's cheap. I know we kind of tossed around the idea of maybe like Chase Daniel if Stafford is confirmed out because of the matchup and he's only 4K. And, you know, you can pay up for running backs, you can pay up for receivers, so you have to pay down somewhere. Are, is there anyone that's like super cheap, like under 6K or so that you're looking at specifically in tournaments on the slate yeah so i i'm as of right now you asked me on friday at like three o'clock i do think stafford is going to play uh but we'll obviously we'll probably get this news on like saturday would be my guess hopefully it would be nice to know on saturday but 
Um, and I don't like a ton of these cheap guys. I think Drew Locke, uh, which you kind of mentioned on the Game 30 podcast, on the opposite side of the Falcons game is interesting um, a little bit. And I think Derek Carr on the opposite side of Herbert, I think, is interesting as well a little bit. But I'm not super in on any of the cheap guys. I think Ryan's probably the lowest I would go, honestly. I more or less agree. I think to a tag, tag of Viola is solid. Um, did you see the report that Miami gave him the job because they want to see if he's decent because they might take a quarterback with the Texans pick? Yeah, I think like I think that was a little bit of like a clickbaity headline. But when he first got when he first got promoted to starter, a lot of people in our Discord were like, "Why would you do that?" And I literally said they probably want to see what he is because they're going to have two high picks. So I don't think like the theory of that is off, but I think it would take a lot for them to draft a quarterback at the top of the draft. Like I think the headline was a little yeah. bit like clickbaity, but I think it's obvious you would want to know what he is when you're going to be positioned at the top of the draft with two picks. Yep, I completely agree. I To, to me... He's a very solid prospect. He's going to be good. I, I don't think he's one of the guys that busts. Um, and it, it's not like I'm really overly scared of Arizona's defense. So I think this is a decent spot for him, especially since he's 5,500. I I don't remember, but I'm assuming Justin Herbert was super cheap when he first started, right? Like he, yeah. he didn't jump until really recent weeks. Like he was under 6K for the longest time and just kept dominating. So I wouldn't be shocked whatsoever if... Tua can not replicate it because Herbert's been so good. Uh, but if he can produce, just because, like, against the Rams, he didn't have to do anything. And people were like, oh, he didn't look good at all. Well, honestly, there was nothing to that game. It, it didn't matter whatsoever. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I think that's a good call. And that's someone that you would want to be on early before. You know, you want to hit him before he has the big game, right? Um, especially mm -hmm. while he's cheap. So I'm down for that for sure. So moving on to running back, um, there's three guys that are projecting for a ton of ownership, which is Dalvin Cook, Chase Edmonds, and Josh Jacobs. Uh, while we were on this pod, uh, Kenny and Drake got ruled out. So Chase Edmonds is probably going to be, at minimum, I would say the second highest owned. I think you can add James Conner in there. He's not going to be, I don't think he'll be as highly owned as any of those three, but he is definitely going to carry some ownership and we're looking for like low owned pivots on this. So I think you can add Connor. So is there anyone around that price range uh, that you're looking at excluding those players? Oh, I think, I think like at the top tier of running back, the clear pivot would be Christian McCaffrey, who Sam talked about in his ownership report. You can read that DFS cover.com uh, for free, but I don't, I don't think McCaffrey is going to get, a ton of ownership like if he was fully healthy and he mm -hmm. hadn't just missed you know however many games six seven eight games uh he would be a lot higher owned against kansas city than he's going to be this week coming back from injury so if you ever want to get a low owned mccaffrey um to the extent of what he will be this week um now is the time to do it and he's only 8500 which is a discount because before he got hurt he was regularly priced at 10k on DraftKings, so i think if you're pivoting to someone at the top tier mccaffrey will be much lower owned than dalvin cook who is a few hundred cheaper than him yeah i think at at his price at 8500 let's say mccaffrey didn't miss any games and he was just priced 8500 against kansas city he would be owned probably 90 percent or higher correct there, like there would just be no reason not to use him the thing that has me worried about it is i don't know what mike davis is going to do like, they already said they're going to use him, but, you know, McCaffrey can lose a few of his touches and it not matter whatsoever towards its production. I just, I don't know if, like, they're going to play it slow. They're going to split it. Like, I, I don't know. It's, I get it, and I think it's a good tournament option. It's just really, really risky, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I don't know if you're going to talk about, so I don't know if you're going to mention Derrick Henry, but I do want to talk about him, too. Go ahead. That was actually I was going to mention, but go oh, ahead. Go. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to steal it. Let, let me hear what you got. I'm to be 100 percent honest. It's just uh, how often are you going to get Derrick Henry in a game where his team's favored almost a touchdown at virtually no ownership, and he's under 8K? Like it. It's just uh, kind of last week where everyone was just like, you know, pivot Dalvin Cook just because 
someone that talented for that price shouldn't be or shouldn't be getting that low of ownership. I feel like Derrick Henry's in like a very similar situation this week. Yeah, so I actually think we should have maybe mentioned Ryan Tannehill at quarterback because both Tannehill and Derrick Henry, I don't have the splits pulled up um, on me. I'll try and write them into my article before that's published tonight. But Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill both have extremely positive splits as home favorites, and they are home favorites, obviously, in this game. Obviously, the matchup isn't super good against Chicago like it was, you know, when they put Houston at home or something like that. But, you know, the numbers say that they're great plays as home favorites. Uh, We know that if they're winning, they will want to run the ball with Derrick Henry. And, you know, look, he I think he's matchup proof to the extent of like he's going to get his work no matter what. And if he mm-hmm. scores a touchdown, he can have a pretty big day. Like, he still had a decent day uh, against Pittsburgh, and that's as tough as a matchup as you will ever get. So I think under 8K, Derrick Henry for sure is playable in tournaments as a leverage play because I don't think – I literally don't think anyone will play him. No, I completely agree. Um, when you drop down, there's not anyone that really sticks out for a ton of ownership. If you want to say David Johnson – compared to everyone around him then i would argue sure that that works i think you can also go down to justin jackson pope has been ruled out so jackson's ownership might increase come sunday he's only 4900 and that leads me to two guys that i would consider here it's jk dobbins with uh mark ingram doubtful Dobbins has literally been one of the best running backs in the nfl he just hasn't gotten the volume and then he did last week and dominated once again And then on the other side, for 100 cheaper and probably a little less ownership, you can get Gus Edwards, who I believe is a very good running back and seems to have a slight edge on Dobbins. I I would Dobbins is more of the receiving back, but I would argue that if they get out in front of Bolt or of Indy, that Gus Edwards probably is going to take a few more carries. I'm fine with either one of the two. I lean Dobbins personally, but both of them make great plays if Mark Ingram is officially ruled out. Is there any cheap options that, that you're looking at, excluding uh, David Johnson and Justin Jackson? I love the call. I like both both those Baltimore running backs I think are interesting. Uh, don't love a ton of the cheap guys. 5,700 David Montgomery on the other side of the Tennessee game I think is interesting. Um, so Tennessee is going to be without Clowney in this game, which probably affects the quarterback situation more so than the run game, but still uh, is a positive. And I mean, with Cohen out, he's just been so like he has a, a legit floor because he's actually been utilized in the passing game last uh, five games, six, eight, five, five, five targets. So you're pretty much telling me he's going to get five targets uh, in this game on Sunday. And I, the matchup, you know, I don't think it's it's awful, um, more neutral, but I, he's going to get usage, and he's he's cheap. Like, 5,700 is cheap for someone that's going to at least catch the ball a couple times. So I think he's a really good direct pivot off of David Johnson because they're virtually the same price. Yeah, I like that. I'll also add Matt Breda uh, could become popular as the week progresses, uh, assuming he's healthy. I haven't really seen anything after yesterday on him to suggest whether he's going to play or not. If he's out, I don't necessarily know if someone like Jordan Howard gets a ton of ownership. I guess we'll have to kind of wait and see, but um, that's why I didn't really mention any of them earlier. But we can move on to wide receiver. There's kind of like just a grouping of wide receivers that are going to get a bunch of ownership. The highest two are going to be Keenan Allen and Julio Jones, and then right below them, I would assume, is Tyler Lockett. I, it's kind of tough because there are, they just make such good plays that, you know, you want to use them, but I don't necessarily think that they're going to get a ton of ownership because they just kind of can't with, uh, Jones, Allen and Lockett here. Who are some of your top options around this price tag? Yeah, I know you like this guy too, but if you're pivoting at the top of receiver, it has to be DK Metcalf, right? Um, I think Hopkins, Diggs, Julio, Keenan, Lockett, I think all of those guys are going to come in higher on than DK Metcalf. 
He's in the best game of the week, highest over under, two bad defenses, does profile as a shootout. And sure, he Lockett has the better matchup on the inside, um, you know, in the slot, but you know, we've seen them trade, you know, big days. Um, so it's not unlikely that you know, you feel confident that one of them's going to have a big game, but it's also not out of the question that they both could have good games, you know, like maybe one doesn't mm-hmm. score three touchdowns. Like maybe they both have a good game. It's not out of the question. And if you're playing like Russell Wilson, like maybe you could double stack him instead of picking one, just use both of them. Um, they, th- they've been throwing the ball enough. And if the game shoots out, you know, there'll be enough to go around because like all the targets virtually go to Metcalf and Lockett. So I think you can double stack with Russ uh, if you go that route. Yep. I agree with that completely. Uh, I really like Adam Thielen. I know Jefferson's stealing some of his work, but he gets a matchup against Jeffrey Okuda, who has just been dreadful early in his career. I still think he'll be good, but uh, early on he has not found it. Another guy that I like is Allen Robinson. My big hesitation with him is that I just don't think Nick Foles is good. And it really bumps down Robinson because Foles can't get literally anyone the ball. Um, I will say this is, I think, the first week that I would be fine playing any receiver over 6,500. I I wouldn't love to play Will Fuller. That's the only receiver over 6,500 that I would be like, yeah, that's not really my guy. But anyone 6,500 and above, uh, you would have no argument for me this week, which is kind of weird. I don't. Do you have any? Is there a difference? That, like, do you, is there anyone above that price tag that you just definitely wouldn't use? No, there, there's just a ton of good options this week. I think they're all pretty much playable. That's, it's a weird week. That's why I think ownership will be so spread out because, like, you can make a case for so many of those guys. I. Th- <laughs> Is it just me, or does it not seem like either Robbie Anderson or DJ Moore is going to get some ownership? Yeah, I don't know if either of them will end up chalky, but I think they'll both, like, whatever they come in, I think it'll be around the same. I don't think one will have an edge on the other. Um, I don't know. That's a tough situation. I'm not really on, like, either of them, but if they became low-owned, that would be more interesting because early on in the week, they both were projecting to be pretty high-owned, but we'll have to see Mm -hmm. the closer we get to kickoff. I agree with it. For what it's worth, I like Robbie Anderson more in this matchup. Uh, Breland's supposed to cover DJ Moore, and Breland has been really, really good this year. I guess the only other receiver that we should really note for cash is Christian Blake at 3K. Um, Really hard to pivot off of a 3K guy, but is there anyone that that you're willing to pivot to here? Yeah, I, I like someone else in that game. Um, especially if I'm if I'm gonna stack in like three max, I use Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, um, Jerry Judy at forty seven hundred, I think is a good play. Saw ten targets in his last game. Um, obviously really strong matchup uh against Atlanta. I like I think he can win with whoever, you know, pretty much in any matchup. I mean, he's one of the best route runners in the NFL and he's a rookie, right? So mm-hmm. I think I, I don't worry a ton about individual matchup with him as I do someone else. Um, and 4,700 is just too cheap. Like he can easily beat that price tag and it would make sense obviously to get someone on the other side if I'm going to stack Ryan with Julio. Yeah, I agree. I will say for stone cold minimum, Marcus Johnson, assuming he plays, um, he's currently questionable. T.Y. Hilton is now doubtful. Johnson is a speedster that can get down the field. He really only needs, you know, one or two big plays for three K, um, and, and it's just a straight pivot off of Blake, so it's not like he needs to beat the price or anything. I will quick say this is going to break your heart, but Lim Bowden has been placed on the COVID list. Dude, I it's like you just can't get any more unlucky than that, right? Like the time has yep. finally come to where he could maybe get some looks, and yeah, it's just it's just it's a bad day, man. For what it's worth, Jordan Love also placed on the COVID list. Wow, interesting. So I, I don't know how close he's been to Aaron Rodgers, but I can't imagine they're going to make that guy sit out. Um, to tight end, though, tight end's kind of tough. I I feel like Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller are both going to get ownership this week. And then I think if people move down, it's going to be to Hayden Hurst. But I don't feel like there's a really cheap guy that everyone's just kind of plugging in at this point. Um, 
one, do you do you think there's a different tight end that's going to be chalky? And two, who would you pivot off of that trio? No, I, I think I think Kelsey Waller, Hurst, and Henry. I think those are probably the four guys that will get like. I think those are probably the four highest owned guys. Um, so you're just talking pivots off of those guys. I, I mean, I think you know. I don't know who you like. Like you can use any of these those guys in like the five k and below range like you have no fans you know eric mm-hmm. ebron i know you like gasicki you talking about andrews on game Pod. like any of those guys can be used as pivots and then you have like hawkinson as well with galladay out and if stafford plays that's a good play um i have no problems with him but he actually like i guess if stafford's in that might bump the ownership on hawkinson a little bit right you would think just because you have the yeah. galladay being out effect yeah, yeah, I would think so. My, I, I really like Mark Andrews at forty eight, just because he's so cheap, and you know what he can do. He's like a two touchdown threat basically any week. Um, not that I like the matchup; it's actually a difficult matchup. But at only forty eight hundred, you know, it's it's just way too cheap for Mark Andrews. My top option is probably Mike Jasicki. Uh, as I talked about on the Game Theory podcast, Isaiah Ford is now in New England, which means Kasicki's going to see an uptick in snaps, I would assume. Um, unless they plan on... It, how funny would it be if his role doesn't change whatsoever and Grant just now plays Ford's slot snaps? Because I feel like it's coming. Yeah, that could certainly happen. But, I mean, right now, there's not much we can do besides assume that Kasicki's going to see an uptick in snaps and that he's going to be the main beneficiary of uh, Ford getting traded to the Patriots. I will quick say Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde both ruled out. It seems like this is becoming less of a GPP podcast and more of a breaking news podcast, but <laughs> who who do you, who's your favorite tight end play? I guess I should say. Um, I mean, I think Henry Hurst, like, I think that's good chalk for for their prices, right? I, I, so yeah, I'm I was that, thinking I, the same thing. I, I like Henry slightly more than Hurst if I'm picking one of them, though. I think I would agree with that, and I think Hurst is probably going to get more ownership. So, yeah, it could come down to one of these weird things where because they're a hundred apart, just so many people go Hurst that Henry kind of goes under round. Yeah, that could be a thing. That would be cool. Is there any cheap options that you're even considering, Albert O? Like any? Yeah, I've talked, about about I've talked too much about that game. I've talked too much about the game, but you can use him. I actually played him in a tournament lineup last week, so I, that wasn't the worst thing. Not that he had a huge game, but I mean, now he he. I was actually I played him in a tournament too, and I was like on the brink of cashing, and I was like, "What? Well, like, what is happening?" Like the entire time, and he had zero for the longest time, and then just caught that touchdown, and yeah, really propelled me up there. We probably, I don't know, I would add DJ Dallas in, I think, for pivots. if Assuming he doesn't end up getting ownership, he would be interesting with Carson out. But I don't know. Like, Homer barely played in that game. I think he's more healthy this week, um, or at least he's been actually practicing. So I yeah. don't know if they're going to, like, get him more involved. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Like, what the Seattle, like, beat reporters and stuff say. I don't really have a ton of information there yet. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be on DJ Dallas. I'll tell you, most likely I'm not, but I I get it for only 5K. That's all that we have for you guys this week, though. So if you like the podcast, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Leave comments of who you're pivoting to and who you're pivoting off of in the uh, comment section. I don't know why I was <laughs> thinking of what that, that section is called. And then make sure to check out all of our articles at DFSKarma.com. We have a ton of stuff with way more writers than just Ben and myself. Uh, And good luck this weekend.